Um, if we can move on to our next question that we've had. We, we seem to be globetrotting here. So um, we started, we're going now from the U.S. to uh, Australia, to Melbourne, and uh, Vakar Khan Sahib, Jazakallah, for your question. And Vakar Sahib writes the following. I recently had a discussion with a non the friend of mine, about Khilafat. He has put a few questions to me, which are as follows. The first question is this, and we'll take each one in turn, if I may. The first one is, you say, in quotes, your Khalifa is appointed by God. But in reality, he's actually elected by human beings. Isn't this contradictory? Now, this is sort of taking the issue of how the Khilafat comes about, how it's appointed. Jhangir Khan Saab, I could come to you with this, first of all. Obviously, anything which is uh, being done by people of God is being done under the influence of God, under the divine influence. But we must also remember that God manifests His will through people as well. Sometimes it, it, it's apparently a person who's doing something, but in actual fact it's Allah who's doing it. We have two uh, very well-known verses of the Holy Qur'an where this has been highlighted by God Himself. When we know in one of the battles, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam picked up a handful of uh, sand and pebbles and threw it at the enemy, and a storm was whipped up by his doing so. This was just a signal to show that God is with him and the storm started there and then. And they were defeated. So Allah mentioning this incident in the Quran says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى It was not you who threw, it was Allah who threw. Whereas we know that it was the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam who in effect threw the pebbles and the sand. But Allah said it was him, he himself who had done it. So that means that God's intention was manifested through the person. That was God's will. Again, we have in the incident where the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was accepting the Pledge of Allegiance or Al-Bay'ah from uh, some of his followers. He put his hand above their hands. And Allah mentioned this in the Quran and says, Yadullahi fawqa aydihim. It was God's hand which was above their hands. Whereas it was the, the Prophet's hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> so it means that when the Prophet was doing it, it was actual, in actual fact God who was, uh, who, who was behind it. So again, for the election of the, of the Khalifa, it is God who is, who is choosing the Khalifa. He's already chosen. But he inspires the believers to actually go for the right choice. And uh, there, are, there are many instances where we, we see God's hand actually behind it. And I can tell you because uh, as uh, my origin is from Mauritius on my father's side, I can tell you, relate a little incident here, which was told to me by the person himself, the national emir, or the president if you wish, of the uh, Ahmadiyya community in Mauritius. He said when he was uh, 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 boarding the plane to come to the United Kingdom when the fourth Khalifa rahimahullah, had passed away, for the election, as he is emir, he would be in, in the electoral college, um, he said that he was thinking, who am I going to, to vote for? I don't know, you know the people who are most able, etc. I might know, not know them personally at all. So how will I know? So he was praying to God saying, oh Allah, please guide me. Now he kept on praying and at one point he fell asleep. Or he dozed off for a little while and he saw a name in his mind. He didn't uh, write it down, but then he dozed off and saw it again. So this time when he woke up, he wrote it down on a piece of paper, sealed it in an envelope, and nobody knew what, what had happened. He gave it to one of his uh, colleagues who was with him in the, the airplane. And he said, could you please keep this for me? I'll need it later. So okay. the person said, so all right. Not knowing right. what was in it, he took it and put it in his pocket. Okay. So then he proceeded to, to, to England, went for the, ele for the election. The election took place. And when the Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, was, uh, was uh, elected as Khalifa, he emerged from the mosque. And his colleague was standing outside waiting to congratulate him on the, the, the new election. He said, could you please pass me the envelope now? He said, yes. So he took it out of his pocket. He said, could you open it and read me and tell me what's on that paper, please? So he, he, he opened the envelope, read the piece of paper, and what was written on it? Masroor, the name of the caliph to be. And he said, I did not know this person. I had not even heard the name. Yet Allah guided me. Now this is showing that Allah's hand was behind the whole process. And this is how Mirza Masur Ahmad was elected. And now he's the fifth Khalifa. May Allah uh, help him with his uh, support and strengthen his hand. 
Charlotte. I, th I think one of the things, just for our viewers, again, as a reminder, um, please do send us in your comments and questions, but if you have any comments on what you're hearing today and indeed future questions, just as a reminder of the email again, it's faithmatters at mta.tv. That's faithmatters, one word, at mta.tv. And the fax number reminder again, it's 44 for the UK, 208 687 8037. Azhar Hanif Sahib, just on this point, if I may briefly, the whole concept of being guided by God, you know, whether it's um, the basis of the question, it's obviously a friend who has posed this to him, is what everything a Muslim does. It is our belief that we will be guided if you, you know, even today's program, before we started, before the cameras rolled, we began with a prayer, so we are guided rightly. Right. It seems, right. you know, so why should anything, in particular this concept be any different in Islam? It should, it should not confuse one who is a believer, but one who has doubts about faith, about belief, about trusting in God. Of course this issue will always come up, that why are you making these decisions? Are they based on your own mind, your own intelligence, your own experiences, or is the Ruh al-Qudus, the Holy Spirit, Allah's uh, special help moving you in, in a path? And, and it may even go further into the issue of, of, of taqdeer Allahi, that the, the d divine decree and determination that is in our lives, how he has his own plan and, and moves us as a creation in a direction. Although we have some free will, but Allah also has a definite plan on how he wants things to move. So that is manifesting itself in every aspect of Allah's creation. He says there's not even a single leaf that will fall unless it's by his command. So how is it that on such a high level, that it's involving the, the uh, faith and faith of all humanity, he leaves it to just the votes of, of human beings. He cannot. And in this sense, uh, there's a very clear hadith that speaks directly to this, that the believers, and going back to what Jahangir Khan has mentioned from Quran, the beginning of those verses of Quran are the key to the whole issue of Khilafat. It says, وَعَدَلَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ God didn't just promise to every single Tom, Dick and Harry on earth, to use a very English expression in talking about Islam, <laughs> Indeed, he's yeah. speaking to the believers, Aminu, those who have belief, and follow that up by being those who actually live their belief, who do the righteous deeds. He has promised them istikhlaf, that I will establish for you the, the khalafit. So if we are not true believers and not walking in the path of faith, of course, we probably will decline into the issue of politics, into the issue of personal personalities and egos, and that did happen in Islam, is the first tradition I, I, I read out, justified. When the Muslims lost, lost the path of faith, their decisions were now colored by the world, not by the spirit. And they began to make poor judgments, and the leadership reflected that. And the leadership then became despotic and became monarchical and all these things, and it destroyed it. But he said, the prophet will be raised, the spirit, the faith is raised, decisions will be good. So here in the early era, the, mentioned in uh, Sahih Bukhari, Kitab al-Ahkam and Bab al-Istikhaf. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa reported by Hazrat Aisha, he, he said <coughs> that he had intended to call in Hazrat Abu Bakr and hand him a writing for his khilafat meaning he was intending to, to make a decision right then. That I'll, I wish to appoint him in my lifetime to be my Khalifa. As I said in the case of Hazrat Musa, he did this for Hazrat Joshua. He in his lifetime said, you will be my Khalifa. The Holy Prophet then stopped, the hadith goes on and said, so that after the death of the Holy Prophet wasallam, other claimants to the office might not arise. To, to make sure this is clear. But then the Holy Prophet wasallam did not pursue the idea, believing, his belief now, that God would not accept the election of any other person besides Hazrat Abu Bakr as Khalifa, nor would the believers agree otherwise. So he's put in both contexts that neither would God let this happen, nor would the believers of that era choose otherwise.